So this is question 15 from paper 1 from the year 2013. So we're told that there are three functions, fx, gx and hx, are defined as follows. So you have the three functions here, fx, gx and hx. So the first thing we have to do is solve fx equals 0. Well now the fx refers to this function here. Now before I go ahead and explain how to answer this, I'd just like to point out that what you don't do is put 0 in for x in this function. You would only do that if you had something like this, f of 0, because whatever is in the brackets should always go in for x in the function. But you can see clearly here there's no 0 in the brackets, there's actually x. And when you say f of x equals 0, you're really saying, well, all of this is equal to 0. So all of this is equal to 0. Um, so that's the complete opposite of putting 0 in for x. All of this has to give you 0. Um, so what you should do in this case is realize that f of x is actually equal to all of this. So we can replace that fx with 2x squared plus x minus 6. So just to repeat that, because students often get this confused, um, f of x here, we already know that f of x is equal to all of this. So that means we can simply replace f of x with this. So we're replacing this f of x with 2x squared plus x minus 6. Then we have a quadratic equation, and we can solve that equation to find two values of x. So that what, that's what it means, that's, that's what it wants you to do when it says solve f of x equals 0. You've got to replace the f, f of x. Similarly, you're going to have to replace the g of x here and the h of x with what they're equal to. Now, there are many ways of solving quadratic equations. If you're really not confident with them, you can always use the minus b formula. That will always work. Um, and then there are several other methods. I'm just going to show you one. Now, you don't need to use my method. You can use whatever method your teacher gives you. But you might find this useful. So my rule of thumb is when there is a, a number beside the x squared, I, I use this particular method. So I, I consider these ones to be slightly more difficult than, say, the ones where you don't have a number beside the x squared. So what I do, first of all, is I multiply the first term by the last term. And that, in this case, gives me minus 12x squared. And I put that underneath the middle term. Then I put an a over the middle term and an m over this term here. And the a and the m stand for add and multiply. So what I'm trying to do here really is find two terms down here that will multiply to give me minus 12x squared and add to give me plus 1x. Now the first thing you should think of is what sign do we multiply to get a minus? So well, what two signs? That would have to be a minus by a plus. So I'll write that down first. Then I think of, well, what two terms will I multiply to get minus 12x squared? And will I add to get plus 1x? Remember, if there's no number here, you assume it's a 1. So to work out the factors of 12, in other words, the numbers that multiply to give me 12, I start, always start with 1 1 and 12. So 1 and 12, that, that multiplies to give me 12, but it doesn't add to give me 1. So then I go up to 2, 2 and 6. Again, it, it multiplies, but it doesn't add to give me 1. Then the next term the next term I try would be 3, 3 and 4. Well, that seems like it would work, because if we had, say, minus 3x and plus 4x, that would add to plus 1x. The next thing I do is I carry down the rest of the term. So 2x squared goes here, minus 6 goes here, equals 0. So if you notice, all we've done is change the x here to minus 3x plus 4x. Everything else remains the same. So all we've really done is change this quadratic trinomial, it's called trinomial because it has three terms, into a quadratic that we can factorize by grouping. So we're going to factorize this part now by grouping, uh, which is fairly straightforward to do. So the first thing we do is we get the common factor from the first pair, which is just x. x is common to both. So if we divide x into 2x squared, we get 2x. 
we divide x into minus 3x, we get minus 3. Now we look at the common factor here, would be 2 obviously, so it's going to be plus 2. And then 2 into 4x goes 2x, 2 into minus 6 goes minus 3. So you notice the 2x minus 3 is here and here. Uh, so we can say that now that the 2x minus 3 is a common factor of these two terms. So we're going to bring that on the outside, so it's going to be 2x minus 3 into x plus 2. So how do we get the x plus 2? Well, we simply cancel this with this, we're left with x. Cancel this with this, we're left with plus 2. So there are our factors, and remember they're equal to 0. And all, all that remains to do now is separate the two factors and put them equal to 0. So you do this. I usually do this to help me remember. So 2x minus 3 equals 0, and then x plus 2 equals 0. And finally, we bring the 3 across the equal to sign, so it's 2x equals plus 3. Remember to change the sign. And then x equals 3 divided by 2. So we're bringing the 2, which is multiplying by x, underneath the 3 on the other side. Doing the opposite, dividing into 3. And this one here, we're, we're going to just bring the 2 across, so it's going to be x equals minus 2. So in the second question, we're going to do something similar. We're going to replace the gx here with x squared minus 6x plus 9. So that gives us this equation. Now this is a simpler quadratic equation because we don't have a number next to the x squared. So I'm going to use a different method for this. This time I'm going to put the a over the middle term and the m over the n term. And we can kind of pretty much go straight to the answer, the factors of this expression. So we put in our two sets of brackets. In here it was always going to be x by x because it's just x squared here. So we just have x by x to give us x squared. Next we ask ourselves what do we multiply to get a plus. So what do you multiply to get a plus normally? It could be a plus by a plus or it could be a minus by a minus. But as we have to add to get a minus, I'd say it's going to be a minus and a minus. Then the final thing that we have to do is ask ourselves what multiplies to give us 9 and what adds to give us 6. So that could only be 3 times 3. 3 plus 3 gives us 6. So let's write them in. So to double check that we've got the right answers here, we simply multiply minus 3 by minus 3 and ask ourselves, does it give us plus 9? Yes. And then we add minus 3 to minus 3. Does it give us minus 6? Yes. That means we have the right factors. So just like in the previous question, we split these factors apart. So we say we, we set this factor equal to 0 and this factor equal to 0. And, and then we bring the 3 across the equal to sign. So in both cases, we're going to get answers x equals to 3. So you can see there, when you, when you don't have a number next to the x squared, it's pretty straightforward to solve uh, the equation. Now the last one, uh, we have hx equals 0. So hx is x squared minus 2x. So we have to replace the hx with x squared minus 2x. Now if you notice, there's only two terms here, so we can't, this is not a quadratic trinomial. We've got to factorize this some other way, and if you notice that x is common to both, so we can actually do highest common factor on this. So that's how we're going to factorize this part now. Remember, when you're solving a quadratic equation, you're always trying to, first of all, put the everything equal to zero and then factorize the part on the left hand side so you don't always have to use quadratic factorizing you can use highest common factor difference of two squares any type of factorizing so this one obviously we can use highest common factor so if you can use highest common factor you should uh, now these two factors x and x minus two we have to split apart and put them both equal to zero so it's no, no different to the other problems here. When Once we get to this stage, we just split the two factors apart and put them both equal to zero. So this is a factor and this is a factor. So x is equal to zero and x minus two is equal to zero. All we have to do then is bring the two across and you get x equals two. So the important thing to get from this question is if we're asked to solve an equation that involves say an fx or a gx or a hx or something like that, what we need to do is replace the fx with what it's equal to. And 
Once we've done that, we end up with an equation that we can actually solve using algebra, uh, which usually involves an expression in x. So if, if there's an x squared involved, then it's a quadratic equation. So what we have to do is uh, put everything to the left of the equal to sign equal to 0 and then factorize the part on the left, eventually splitting the factors and putting them both equal to 0. So you end up with two linear equations like these, and you simply solve the linear equations individually until you get your two answers for x. So part b tells us that the table below shows the sketches of six different functions. Three of these sketches belong to three functions from part a. So write fx, gx or hx into the box underneath the correct sketch for each of the three functions. So we're trying to match up the functions that we were dealing with in the last question with these graphs here. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I, I, I've written down here the answers that we got to the last question. Because usually in these kind of questions, you use the answers from the first question to help you answer the second question. So we, the answer we got for fx was x is equal to 3 over 2 and minus 2. And x is equal to 3 and 3 for gx. x is equal to 0 and 2 for hx. I've also written down the, the three functions in full because we can tell straight away from looking at the function what shape the graph sh should be. Remember, if the x squared term is positive, we should end up with a smiley face shape like this. On the other hand, if it's negative, then we should end up with a sad face kind of shape like this, an n shape. Think of n for negative. So, uh, clearly all of these are positive. So that rules out straight away this one and this one. So we're left with these four here. Now if you remember, how we got the answers here is we put fx equal to 0. In other words, we put all of this equal to 0. So basically, these values here correspond to the point on the curve where fx is equal to 0. So fx is y, remember? So where on the curve is y equal to 0? Well, it'd be equal to 0 here, and it'd be equal to 0 here. So these values here correspond to the points on the curve that cut the x-axis. They're called the roots. So this would be one root, and this would be another root. So that's obviously 0. So I would say that corresponds to hx, because that could be 0 and that could be 2. Couldn't be this, because no 0 here. There is a 0 here, but there's a negative x value here. And this only has one x value. So that sounds a bit like gx, because that gx only has one x value, the number 3. And then finally, uh, 3 over 2 and minus 2, well, that's a negative and a positive. The only one that has a negative and a positive value is this one here, diagram 3. So this would have to be fx. That could be 3 over 2, and that could be minus 2. So just to repeat, when you solve the, uh, when you let a function equal to 0, then what you're saying is you're letting y equal to 0, and when you solve that, you're getting the, the answers that you get are actually the roots of the function, and the roots of the function is where the curve cuts the x-axis, here and here, here and here, and so on.